Hi, this is Mark at LeagueAthletics.com. Thanks for watching session two of the online store setup. In the first session, we talked about the end user's perspective of the store and how they would purchase products. In session two, I'm going to talk about the actual setup of the online store from the administrative view. So the first thing you'll want to do is get logged into the site and navigate to the admin features page and then go down to the tools area and click on online store. Now this is going to bring you to the online stores list. Uh, recently we added a new feature that allows you to add multiple stores to your website. So you may have one that sells apparel and you may have another that sells tickets to events for example. To add a new store we're just going to go on the right side and click the add button. And this is going to bring us to the online store settings page and we're just going to fill out all the settings uh, on this page and submit to set up our store and then once we do that we'll add some products as well. So here I'm going to give my store a name. I'm going to call it Apparel. I'm going to select that I want it to appear underneath of the Home tab. That's this tab here, but you could select any other tab that you had available on your site. Optionally, you can include a store description, which would be shown on the store's uh, home page. And you can also include a note that would be sent out to the user once they've made a purchase. Once you're ready to make your store visible to the public, you can select this public option and also set an open date and optionally a close date. So I'm going to set my open date to today to make sure that my store is open on my website. In this email field, I can uh, enter multiple email addresses if I'd like somebody to receive information once a purchase has been made. This might be nice to enter uh, the person's email that's managing the store or perhaps your treasurer. The direct link can be sent out to somebody in an email or posted on another website perhaps that would lead people back to your storefront. Down in the shipping options we can create shipping methods. So perhaps you have a UPS option or a postal service option or maybe you're just hand delivering pro products. You could enter those methods here and you could associate costs uh, with each. You can also define a global shipping policy and collect tax if it's required. At the bottom, we just want to select how we want people to pay us. So we could choose one of our merchant accounts here, and then also designate a return policy for the store. Once we've got that set up, we'll go ahead and click Submit. So once our store has been defined, now we just need to add products. To do that, we're going to navigate back to the online store area, We'll highlight our newly created store and click Edit. Now this will take us back to the store settings and this time we'll click on the Products tab. So from here we would see a list of products, but because we don't have any we'll need to add one. So to do that we'll click Add Product in the top right corner. And this will bring us to a product info page and this is where we'll define a product that we're going to be selling. So I'm going to give this a title of T-shirt and I'll give it an item ID optionally you can do that or not we can also view or update the inventory but uh, just a tip I might leave this until the end because you're going to define things like sizes and colors and then you can update your inventory specific to those sizes and colors so for now I'm gonna exit out of this pop-up window and leave that alone this option that says item is visible allows you to turn items on and off in your store while your store is live. So perhaps we have a store that's already set up with 10 products and we're adding an 11th and 12th product. We could make those 11th and 12th products not visible yet until they're ready to be sold. But for now I'm going to leave this item visible. In the item description field, we're going to enter details about our product. This is the information that they're going to see from the product details view. For the sake of time, I already have some information that I'm going to paste into this section. And then down below, I'm going to select an image file for this product. And I can also give this uh, image a caption. In the options groups, we're going to define the different options that we have for this product, things like size or color. To create one, we'll just go ahead in the prompt area and click and type in size. And then over here to the right, I'll click edit to add these different sizes. And I'm just going to add small, medium, 
and large sizes. You can do up to four prompts that way, and you can also ask the user to enter information. Perhaps you need to collect something like a jersey number or their last name. You could actually prompt them to enter that, and they could type that in when they're adding the product to their cart. In the pricing section, we're going to define the price for this product. I'm going to set this one at 20, and you can also select which shipping methods are associated with this product. Now, if I had added them in the store settings, you would see them here and the costs associated. We can also set a shipping policy for this item specifically, discounts based on the quantity and if it's a percentage or dollar discount, and we can also set a return policy specifically for this item. And once we have it all set up, we can click Submit to Save. And there we have our t-shirt that we've just added. So in order to edit this item in the future, we would just come back to this Products tab. We could click directly on the t-shirt link here, or we could go ahead and click on the Edit button. We can also delete the item if we don't want it anymore. But here's uh, what I was talking about with inventory. When I click on this, it's going to display all of the inventory that we have. Now, because I added those options, small, medium, and large, it's giving me a matrix that I can enter for these specific, um, uh, these specific sizes. So perhaps I have five small, four medium, and I have eight large. Now, as people buy these products, those quantities will be reduced, and we'll know exactly how much of each size we have on hand. Once these are sold out, you can determine if we just want to display them as sold out and where you won't be ordering anymore, or you can actually say that they're back ordered and you will be ordering uh, more products. For now, I'm just going to leave it as sold out and submit that to save. Now, another handy option on this page is the clone option. So perhaps you have multiple t-shirts and they have different designs. Instead of going through the setup of adding uh, four different products and, and entering all of the information, we can just simply click the clone item and we can create this t-shirt multiple times and perhaps just edit the basic information like the title and upload a new image. So I'm going to do this very quickly and create three t-shirts. And then what we can do from here is we can navigate to that home tab because that's where we said that we want our store to appear and click on that online store option. And this is what our online store would look like to the end user.